going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is the Cage Review. This is going to be a review for WWE Smackdown Live and it's for 219.19. Um, really cool show. They kind of did a repeat of Raw in a way. They brought in the four guys from NXT that they had on Raw last night. They all had matches and I really like this. I really like seeing just the new matchups and uh, these four guys are all incredibly talented so uh, very cool to see. So you start out the show, you have Shane O'Mac, he comes down and he's kind of doing the Triple H bit like last night. He's saying that, you know, the four guys, Aleister Black, Johnny Gargano, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, and Ricochet are all going to have matches tonight. And he gets interrupted by The Miz and they start talking about, you know, possibly uh, a rematch with the Usos. The Usos come down, they say, they accept the challenge, Shane makes the challenge, there's curse some trash talking. It was a pretty good intro. Um... I've always said that I really like uh, the promos from the Usos. I really like The Miz. He can talk, if nothing else. He's really good on a mic. And Shane McMahon's pretty damn good, too. So, good intro. And that leads into your first match, which is Aleister Black versus Andrade Cien Almas. These guys had matches in NXT. They're really good together. And this match really showcased that. Uh, I think both Andrade and Aleister Black are... Incredible performers. You you put them in the right situation, and they're going to make magic happen, and they have before for sure. Uh, it's a really good match. At the end of the day, you know that you know Alistair is going to win, and of course he does. And it's kind of funny because I think Zelina Vega is actually Alistair Black's wife in real life, so that's that's kind of funny because you know she's the manager for Andrade and the wife of Alistair. Uh, kind of an interesting scenario there. Backstage, you get a DIY bit where they get interrupted by the bar, and um, uh, basically DIY, you know, Johnny Gargano says, we come to break the bar. Um, so you have uh, a real quick New Day, AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy bit, uh, where the New Day are, you know, basically throwing out the olive branch because they were competing at Elimination Chamber, and now they're teaming up tonight. And so you just get a little quick bit there that was supposed to be funny. A little awkward, but, you know, whatever. Uh, then you get The Bar versus DIY, J Johnny Gargano and uh, Tommaso Ciampa. And pretty good hard-hitting affair, uh, especially from The Bar's end. It's kind of nice because you have the really technical side with Johnny Gargano. And Cesaro's pretty good at having technical wrestling uh, background as well. And then you have the hard-hitting style of Sheamus. Uh, and Tommaso, he's kind of a unique combination of both with a little bit of just extreme personality in there, which, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a weird combination for me because I can't really define exactly what I would call Tommaso, uh, but it works. Um, so there were, there were a couple of spots during this match where you just thought that it was like legitimate, these guys have to be hurting. Like these guys look like they're taking some real shots. Um. At the end of the day, Tommaso winds up rolling up Cesaro, and uh, they get the win, DIY. So it was very cool. Uh, you've already got three out of four uh, NXT guys walking away with a win again. Uh, after that, you get an in-ring Asuka interview, and you know she's asking about you know if she feels a little bit left behind. Uh, I do feel a little bit bad for Asuka. I really do. She's got you know this is just barrier with the language thing. But she says that, you know, she's looking for new competition. Mandy Rose comes out to challenge her. So, non-title match, Asuka versus Mandy Rose. Um, I like Mandy Rose. I think she's decent in the ring. Um, and obviously, Asuka is really good. And Asuka really had a couple of really good moments there. There was a spinning back heel kick that she threw in there that was very, very cool. Uh, kind of a Northern Lights suplex that she did, too. So, the match... It was decent, for sure. Uh, and Mandy Rose comes away with a win. Don't know how I feel about that. Um, but I guess at some point you got to start creating someone new. And, you know, give them a shot and hopefully they can work with it. So we'll see what happens there, is basically how I feel. Uh, I like Mandy Rose. Do I think she's at the pinnacle of the women's division? Not yet. Not yet. So, uh, you have that, and then you have uh, a backstage Charlotte interview, and man, she had bruises 
all over her arm, man. It looked nasty from the crutches that Becky was beating her with. Um, pretty good. Uh, I, I've always said that Charlotte's really good at doing interviews. I really think she can talk with the best of them, male or female. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, she's basically saying, you know, but it doesn't matter what Becky does. It's Charlotte and Ronda one-on-one -on -one come WrestleMania. Then you get Ricochet versus Eric Young. You haven't seen Eric Young in a while, so this almost feels like an NXT match on SmackDown. Um, and, you know, Ricochet, we all know he's amazing. Like, the guy probably could be a Sir Diesel A performer. I mean, he's everywhere. He's incredibly acrobatic, incredibly athletic. So, I'm a huge fan. Uh, it was a good match. You had some outside interference from Sanity and just made Ricochet look strong. So that was cool. I really liked it. Ricochet does come off with a win again. Uh, hits a, what, 630 or whatever it is on Eric Young. And then gets the win. So definitely building up these four guys coming in from NXT, which I like. I really do. Um, a lot, I guess a lot of people had problem with the way they were built on uh, Raw and I will agree that the crowd was absolutely dead. Like, that crowd on Raw, like, I don't know where they were, somewhere in uh, Louisiana, I think they said. It was just a dead crowd. crowd was a little bit more lively tonight, added a little bit more to it. Um, as far as the build for these guys, they're bringing them in, they're giving them wins. It, as far as anything else goes, you know, WWE hasn't done very good at introducing characters in a long time, as far as I'm concerned. And so at least these guys are walking in and they're looking strong. So I'm happy with that. Uh, backstage, you get a New Day interview. You know, they're talking up Kofi, Kofi Mania, you know, trying to get Kofi against Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. Um, and that leads right into the six-man tag. You get a real quick uh, Kevin Owens promo. It's the same promo they had on Raw. So they just replayed that. And then you get Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, and Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe, Randy Orton, and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan cuts a real quick promo doing his usual shtick. Um, but the match itself was very, very good. It really was. Uh, for quite a while there, you had Kofi paired up against Randy Orton. And again, Kofi is just showing why he is such an underrated, underused talent. And now that you know everybody's picking up this momentum, you know, I'll be honest. I kind of like forgot how good Kofi is because they haven't really done anything with him and he really has been like on the back burner and therefore kind of out of my mind but you know to come back and see him in these matches and seeing him doing so damn good it really says something um so you had a couple of great exchanges there Kofi Kingston Randy Orton uh Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles during this matchup uh, a lot of chaos ensues, of course, when you have six-man tags. At the end of the day, Kofi Kingston hits Trouble in Paradise on Daniel Bryan, gets the win. Shane McMahon comes out, says that his opponent for Fastlane is Kofi Kingston for the championship. Of course, the crowd pops with that. We'll see where they go with it. Um, but I like it. Kofi's got, you know, this wave of momentum now. He's got the fans behind him. So I think it's a smart move. As far as the show goes, I really liked it. I think bringing in the NXT guys really does add something to it. I love seeing Aleister Black. He's one of my favorites, honestly. Uh, Johnny Ariano and Tommaso Ciampa, amazing. Ricochet, amazing. Um, and then you had a very, very good six-man tag. Uh, Asuka, Mandy, you know, it was decent. So there wasn't really a whole lot wrong with this. Um... I don't know that anything necessarily blew my mind, except for, you know, some of the moves during a couple of the matches. Um, so I'm going to give this a strong 8.5 out of 10. Maybe a 9. I'll give it a 9 out of 10, just because there was... I'm basing it on, A, you had a lot of really good matches, and B, there was very little that was poorly done. And that's the key. That's the separation from this and Raw. As Raw, you will always have... Uh, a who cares match, a thrown together match, and a couple of idiotic segments. Almost guaranteed any show you go. This doesn't have that. 
And so I have to give it a much higher score because I think, you know, with what they're doing, it all fits. It's working very well. It's entertaining itself with the matches and it's building things. So I like it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm at. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. I felt very strongly about this. So that's where I'm at. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe and share. My name is Kevin Jackowitz, Cage Nation out.